What's up guys, and welcome back to my Let's Play series for The Outer Worlds. In this episode, we're going to be leaving Edgewater for the very first time and going to Groundbreaker. This place serves as a neutral space station for which we have to try and find a person named Gladys. Hope you enjoy, and please remember to like and subscribe. Make yourself at home, Captain. Alright, let's go ahead and try on this holographic shroud. I have no idea what it does. Oh damn, we actually went up a level from picking that up? I'll take that. The holographic shroud projects a disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID cartridge for the area. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on site. Alright, that sounds very, very useful. So let's go ahead and upgrade our skills. What we need now is to get persuasion up to 60. So coward target's armor is down 50%. And we want to get that to 40, which gets tinkering costs down 50%. That is amazing as well. But where are we going to spend our last points? I think long guns is a safe bet. Okay, and now for our perk. I think I want to get this one over here. Plus 5 base armor rating. You just can't go wrong with that. Alrighty, so next up we are heading to a place called the Groundbreaker and speaking to someone named Gladys. Should be pretty easy. Let's go to the nav portal right here and see where this place is. Oh, so it's a spaceship. I don't know if that was mentioned before because it's been a long time since we talked to Phineas. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Can we talk? Absolutely. What's up? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson. Oh yeah? What about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Sure, we can head over right to engineering. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Did you learn the trade from your father? It sounded like it when you were talking to Reed. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I don't see the humor there. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. But you're actually good at this, and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. After school, you moved straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Did you have much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects, or listen to my fretting. Oh gosh, <laughs> look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. I think it's about time that we headed out of here and explored the Groundbreaker. Let's do it. This place looks pretty normal. Captain. Hey, Captain. I'm in space. Well, she's pretty excited. I guess we've docked, but we haven't technically entered the Groundbreaker yet because I see a customs office right here. Customs and inspection, right this way! Identification, please. Here you go. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. 
But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. So how do I get this resolved? You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. Can't miss it. Any idea why my ship was impounded? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. Great. I'll go talk to him and straighten this mess out. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Sure. Wanda Dorset over in sickbay, tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. I got it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? I'm looking for someone named Gladys. Offense. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Is there any place I can find work around here? Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. So, how does Halcyon Holdings work, anyway? Are you pulling my leg? Nah, I'm new around here. You must be one of them long-haul freighters from outside the colony. Well, I won't hold it against you. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That groups what we now call the Board. The Board runs most of the system, don't they? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. So how does the Groundbreaker fit into all that? Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. So there's actually a boardroom somewhere with all these company heads in it? Sitting around, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Alright, I got it. Glad to help. I think that's all I need to know about work. Alright. We're gonna be on our way. See you around. Be seeing you. So it looks like we got through customs. We're officially in the Groundbreaker now. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Captain, could I have a moment of your time? Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Wow, this place is so cool. Let's just take a moment and let it all sink in. Definitely the coolest place we've been to so far. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy. I forget his name already. Someone from the board, I guess. Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastard. Ah, the board. Organized, efficient, competent. Wheel, mostly. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh yeah, Alex is dead. This is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? I'm really sorry for your loss. Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. 
What was your relationship with him? He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Um, yep, yeah, you sure did. Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? He was eaten alive by feral canids. No! How dreadful. That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... Their droppings. Again, I'm very sorry. Can we get back to the topic on hand, though? Right, right. You're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there, I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go... Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? Why is the board so interested in Wells anyway? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Why do you think I know anything about Wells? Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table. Alex never mentioned anything about Phineas. That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? What about the board having your head? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Is there anything I can do to help you? Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. Again, I have no clue where Wells is. It's fine. Really, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Now, if you've nothing else, please see yourself out. I'd like to drown myself in work. I want to ask you about something else. Be my guest. Can you get me access to Stellar Bay? Oh, good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? So, no. No. Emphatically no. Unequivocally no. Immutably no. No would have done it. You don't have to crock open a thesaurus. Best to be clear, I believe. What do you do here exactly? I'm the certified representative of the board's interests here on the Groundbreaker. I'm their eyes, ears, and busy little hands. Big fish in a small space station. Nice setup. I have few complaints. Does it seem hot in here to you? Ugh. Law, but it's miserable. My underarms are damp. How can I be expected to work in these conditions? Chief Tennyson is supposedly looking into the cause, but I've seen no action from her. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. Why are there armed guards in here? Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. To watch your back, you mean? Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status, and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. You keep calling offices on their promenade benign. When the alternative is board guards at their gates, yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. What are those locked doors in the back? A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Does the chairman visit here often? Oh, good law, of course not. He'd never set foot on this decrepit junk pile. As this office is the primary embassy for the board on Groundbreaker, corporate bylaws specifically state a room must be maintained for the chairman's exclusive use. 
Back to my other questions. Ask away. I think that we'll be going. In good riddance, see ya, bud. I don't want to ever talk to you again. So far, this episode's just been entirely talking, and I don't think that's going to change here. Our next step is to talk to Gladys. I think that she's probably going to be the counterpoint to that last dude. If it's between the unreliable and the rest and go, I believe I'll sleep on the ship. Some good stuff here, and we're technically not stealing it either. Makes it all that much better. Alright, Gladys, we're here. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. Phineas sent me. He said you could sell me a nav key to Stellar Bay. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Tell me about this opportunity. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... No qualms here. Let's hear the details. Do you know Edna? over in engineering. Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway, and Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Say no more, I'm in. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Ben and Outpost Corporate Secrets, got it. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. <laughs> 